Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. You're looking at something that we've looked at before back in 2019. Only today it's all grown up with some new features that makes it really, really worth a second look. It's called the M5S. The Bakey M5S here is a full round uh, smartwatch, fitness watch, health watch, and communications watch now. Unlike the original, the 5S, the M5S, has a calling capability built into it. A dialer, call logs, the whole nine yards, and it's dual mode. That means it can do Bluetooth calling tethered to your phone using the SIM that's in your phone for making and receiving calls. And, and it has a little compartment you can stick a SIM in it directly and you can make and receive phone calls with a different phone number from the watch. Yeah, cool stuff, huh? Add an altimeter, a compass, a barometer, you got one heck of a nice watch. Here's a description of it. It doesn't go into detail about the calling because most of this applied to the original M5. It's a 1.3 inch big touchscreen smartwatch with Corning Gorilla Glass and so forth. It has GPS built into it, but not just GPS, the GLONASS and Baidao and Galileo. Remember all of those? We have a descriptive video up that explains the difference between all of those. And this one apparently just automatically selects which one you need, and it's really good. I've done some testing with it. It's uh, spot on and relatively fast too. You've got um, dynamic heart rate and blood pressure with this one, and um, it tracks and shows you charts and graphs right on the watch of uh, that kind of information. And again now, Bluetooth calling as well as um, your notifications and things pushed from your phone, and of course, uh, separate SIM calling as well. In terms of specs, here they are. Let's see, extra strap is optional. You can get a different one if you want to buy one and they're removable. You've got uh, 360 milliamp hour battery, three to seven days. It seems about right for um, wearing it. The GPS work time about 12 hours with GPS always on if you're going to be doing some long trekking and stuff. A little bit of RAM, a little bit of ROM. It's got some nice uh, watch faces built into it, and it's waterproof IP67. So not really for swimming and showering, but basically anything else, get a little bit of water on it, it should be okay. Comes with a nice little cloth, and this is one with a very bright band to it. Uh, we'll show you the original one in a minute for contrast. You can peel the cover off. And there we go. We've got a nice decorative bezel, microphone over here, charging port, the diodes for your heart rate, well sealed, speaker over here on the side near the buttons. And I've tried this with the phone calling and it actually, that's a really good place for it. Because when you put it on, which is pretty easy to do, and you uh, make a call or receive a call, you can never do this on camera. It just slips in immediately when you're not in a rush. Okay, and because because it's right here where the speaker is, I can't turn my arm to show you that well. Anyway, you lift your arm, you put your ear right here. You can hear the subtle sounds of what's going on in the background on a call. It's really, really good. The volume's nice and loud um, overall, and you can get it even even better if you put it right up to your ear. Okay, let's turn it on in a moment. Let's take a look. We have a charging dock. They stuck with this concept. Wish they would have changed that. I'm not a big fan of charging docks, uh, especially these alligator clip kind like that. For one thing, they're a little tricky to get aligned. Um, it's a curve, and if you can see in here, it's it's got you know, indentations that have to line up just right. If you're not on it like that, it's not going to charge. You have, you have to get it to snap in. Yeah, didn't like that in the first one, and I don't like it on this one. Would have been way better to go with a magnetic coupler. I don't understand the reasoning behind this unless there was no re uh, room for magnets. But nonetheless, that's what you get. 
This is new in the box. Tweezers. Why would you need tweezers? To remove the sim that goes right here behind that little panel that you take off with the screwdriver right here. And then you got to really get that thing out because there's a sim in it right now. And uh, yeah, you can take it out, put it in, whatever. By the way, the sim goes with the metal facing up. For those of you who get one of these, had it in backwards, couldn't figure it out. Mr. Ticks, you know. <laughs> anyway, we got a manual to the M5S. And very similar manual to the one that came with the original. We'll page through it quickly. It uses the Smart Time app for tethering. And that's a pretty nice app. It works really well. It uh, covers the basics for you on the screen. And some color pictures of what you'll see. You have a couple of different ways of displaying the apps. There, you see you see how the SIM card goes in? Because I'm not going to take it apart and show you that. And you don't actually need to take the band off to get the SIM in and out. It'll go in right above it. It's a pretty cool way of doing it. Well hidden, and uh, once it's in there, it's in there. Okay, Chinese on that side. Have we covered everything? Are you ready to play? All right, me too. We'll clear this out, and I'm going to compare this with the, uh, the original for you. Simple press on the top button. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And there you go. Smartwatch, spinning little icon, and it boots back up. It's pretty quick. And this is one of the favorite watch faces. I like it because it's got good contrast time. In fact, it's too bright for the screen in here right now. Date time, heart rate, which is real time. It'll pick that up uh, periodically for you and update it. Your um, battery level and your basic step count and whatnot. While that one's here, I'm going to bring over the original uh, M5 and... We'll show you the two together. Now, not sure how good the camera can pick up the contrast. This is a kind of a yellowish white screen, and this is a pure white screen, and it's a bit brighter. They're both set on uh, pretty low brightness levels. When you scroll down, you get a panel of things here, and I'm going to be explaining this to you in a moment. I just want you to see them here. You come over, you get the QR code for... Um, Scanning uh, to get the app. Boy, that is really bloomed out, isn't it? Well, we have the link in the show notes you can get it from, too. You have calendar, you have temperature, and then you're back to watch faces. When you scroll... Well, we did that way, didn't we? When we scroll up, you have uh, motion records. And this is the last one I did. I don't have one in the old watch right now. And step count is after that. This has only just been brought back out of the dust. Here's a uh, heart rate. Um, okay, not sure why I've got heart rate on this one because I haven't been using it, but I have been wearing that one today. Here we go with a uh, barometric pressure. Well, that's different considering they're both at the same location right now. This is so much brighter here right now. Uh, and then uh, altitude. And that's matching somewhat, 134, 164 feet. Again, I'm not too sure about the accuracy of all of this, but perhaps with some calibration it would work. This was a drawback of uh, this watch. The, the compass just didn't work, and that was kind of a, a bummer. The, the needle should be pointing toward me. Uh, that's the direction of north. They fixed that pretty well. Wow, I'm so sorry you can't hardly see it's green on there and it's showing you the number of the uh, the angle, but the compass is working really well on there. That's kind of working, but you never put two compasses together. That's just one of the things you just don't do. Okay, back to watch faces. I lowered this one down. It was at three. This was at one, so that was just blooming way, way too much. When I go this way... I get to the different apps. Now take a look. I'm just going to go through quickly. There, from page one, we got health and sports. And then we've got contact styler, call logs, messages. Those four are brand new. Then we pick up with notifications and settings. We have Bluetooth here where you can do some things with Bluetooth that we couldn't over here. A music controller, calendar, 
your relax program in this one. There's alarms, sedentary uh, reminder, find your phone, uh, remote capture, the barometric pressure, altitude, compass, all those are there, tools, and, oh, come back here, we don't want to go into the compass, and motion, which is, you know, twist your wrist to see the time, themes, and look, you've got Siri, or the, uh, the trigger word with Google, you press that when you're Bluetooth tethered to your phone, and you can activate um, the assistant over there. You can ask questions, you can get it to do things on your phone, phone if you want to, you know, all the commands that you normally could do, you can now do from the new watch that has true Bluetooth tethering. Okay, at this point, what I'm going to do is cut over and show you the review of all of the apps um, and the review of the tethering app that we've already done for this one, and then we'll come back and wrap it up with the final comparison when you press the button it comes into the basic watch face when you slide down on here now you get into a lot of different things you can go into the different modes where you have turntable or four apps as the menu style that's when you're scrolling through them your overall settings your do not disturb bluetooth which is turned on for tethering and your overall saver that will uh Put you into this time mode now if you want a real nice watch that will last a long 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 time you go into that saver mode you've got big digits and the battery uh current charge listed right on the screen you slide down on it to get back to this face and that's how you break out of it by hitting the saver again plus you can see all the other stuff on here as well so once we're in here we can't do anything else from here. Press the button, you can turn it off and on again. But come down, press that button, switches back, and now you're in the actual mode once you activate it. Okay, uh, do not disturb. We talked about settings. We may as well just jump into there. This is where we have um, your international settings, which shows you the different languages that this thing supports. We'll run through those for you. Mm, a few, mostly European languages. And of course, AutoSync will, will switch to the language of your phone. You've got your basic Bluetooth settings, power on and visibility on or off. Then we've got the clock where you can set that up or it'll sync automatically with uh, your watch or your phone. Uh, your basic sound. Uh, selections of the different types of ring tones and alert, alert tones, the volume for each of those where six is maximum. Then you're hidden your display where you have, again, the style of uh, icons that you want to see, the brightness. And notice it's on level one right now, which is the lowest. I can crank this puppy way up, and it's really good and bright outdoors when it's at that level. But for shooting on the video, I keep it a little bit lower. Let's try it here. And uh, yeah, that looks good, huh? Oh, wait a minute, it's stuck with one, two, go up there, and then hit OK, there. Now we're on brightness three, a little bit brighter. And of course, you can set your screen time out as high as 60 seconds, which I use for the reviews, and as low as five seconds. So we'll stick with 60. And then you got reset and overall about for this watch, which gives you the device name and information for uh, pairing it and your connection service information and your release time so there's your firmware update information on it as well really nice overall so we got to all of that once again by sliding down this way and all of this stuff and notice that's the first dot of four so i can come over here i've got all of these things brightness language sound vibration and i've got a calendar and i've got my temperature it's not 32 degrees Fahrenheit where I am right now, I'll tell you that. So it probably needs to be tethered and updated and check the location that it's reporting. Maybe that's Shenzhen, I'm not sure. Um, and then you're out of it. So you got several screens of information at the top. If I go to the left, I come over here to my sports stuff. Indoor running, outdoor, riding, climbing, marathon, 
and a record of your last activities. And it does a really good job of um, capturing all of this stuff, which of course you can transfer over to your phone. I've used it a few times, shows you the date and time, the elapsed time, your heart, average heart rate through the whole thing, and all of this stuff. Um, distance, traveled, uh, altitude gained and, uh, and lost. And if I get it all the way down, I guess that's about it. Yeah, your total uh, altitude up, altitude down, and so forth. And of course, it's creating a track as well with GPS that you'll see when you uh, tether it to your phone, and you'll be able to look at it there. Here's a short little hiking one. Basic same information that's available on it. And on any of these, uh, like an outdoor run, you go into it, says GPS is off, you say start, it will search, and it doesn't begin until after it catches the, um, the satellite so it knows your location, and then you can proceed to do the activity from there. So that's a really nice feature. Of course, we're indoors, so it's not picking up GPS right away, but it, uh, it can pick it up pretty easily. I swipe down, and now I'm into... Uh, this last uh, event that I just did. Oh, there you go. It's just now counting down. So it's actually um, was remembering that it's going into an event, which is great. We can show you that. And it also has the time on the screen. So many of them don't do that. Uh, they show you your stuff, but not the time. So if you want to glance and see how you're doing with time, you can't see it. I'm going to end this one. And then there's the basic information for that short little burst that we did and i can hit the check mark and get out of here and if it were long enough to capture any information that would be there uh as well but this is the last one we just did okay it's rolling it through and that's the second page of information for it okay we're getting it and that's what happens when you scroll up when you scroll down you're into these four pages when we scrolled left we're over to here and now finally he says come on back to the time scroll to the left that way, and now we get to all of the different things that we've got. We've got health. This is where we have pedometer, heart rate, and blood pressure, and it's using the diodes on the back. So for example, coming into heart rate, I can press and start it. Uh, it's probably about right. I'm beating up into the mid 80s because I'm all excited talking to you guys, and it's taking its measurement. Okay, bail out of that. It's showing you a graph of all of that stuff as well. I think that's only page on here. And then you got the sports modes, and that's what we just looked at. It's the same thing as when you swiped over to the side. Here's notifications, and no, guys, I know you all want me to show you the notifications on the screen. How big is the font? Will it get WhatsApp? What will it do with uh, this and that? But I'm just going to show you that it's there and uh, move on to settings, which is what we already looked at. It's got a music control when you're tethered to the phone. It's got a calendar function in here, which we saw from one of those screens up above, and it's just a basic calendar. It um, doesn't do much more than that. Here's that whole relax section where you can go into these breathing modes, one, two, three, five minutes of breathing, and you get quiet and take a breath, and it cycles you through relaxation, see, with an inhale and an exhale and so forth. But at least it is here, and it's a way that you can uh, use it for feedback uh, in the relaxation section. Built-in alarms, sedentary reminders are right there. Um, then there's your find your phone when you're tethered, a remote capture for taking pictures. Here is our barometric pressure. Not only do you get the current pressure, but you're going to get a graph. Now, we just started this thing, and it just said nothing up until right now. But now that it's on and it's tracking, it should go up and down and show you your change in barometric pressure. And those of you knowing how to work with weather will recognize that you can monitor the pressure change in your area to predict whether it's going to rain or not. Here we have altitude, and this is absolute feet now that it's supposedly uh, calculating. I say calibrate, if I can hit it. Well, all right, maybe it's doing it on the fly. Um, 164 feet, I don't know if that's right for where I am. I think it's a little low, but uh, it's giving you your current altitude, as opposed to those watches that you can set zero, and then it will show you your climb or your descent from that point. But if you go over to the actual fitness stuff, 
you can start a climb or a run or whatever, and it's going to give you the um, amount of distance you went up and went down, which is really sweet there. Compass is built into this thing. Uh, I always do this anyway to calibrate it and come around and... How's it doing? Not very good. I'm sitting in the north, so it should be pointing this way. That's the accurate measurement at zero degrees. But uh, compass needs a bit of work, at least mine does, or it needs calibration or something. It's not whipping itself around so that the arrow is always pointed toward me. So that's a fault with it that needs some work. Then we got some tools, timer, stopwatch, and a calculator built into it with reasonable digits that are pretty easy to read with a total, okay, multiple digits on it. Um, then what? Last things are motion, and this is where your wake-up gesture, you can turn that on. Of course, it's going to use more power, but theoretically now when I twist the wrist, it's going to come on, which is great. And then your overall theme. See the blue flower in the background? There's all kinds of different themes in here that you can choose. And I think that one's just plain black theme too. There you go. See that? And some other ones there. And that is everything here. And I believe that's everything in the watch, except for watch faces. Press and hold. And now you see a different selection of watch faces that we can have on here. And again, it's a really bright screen when you have the brightness set up. This is what it looks like on. Yeah. What are a couple of the other ones? Press and hold, slide over. That's the sixth one, it says. Seventh one, here you go if you want a really bright, uh, easy to read outdoor digital screen. Eight, wow. Nine, that's nice. Look at that one with the bright green. It's actually too bright, isn't it? It's uh, washing out. I have to turn it sideways for you to see. By the way, look, you can see it really clearly from the edge on too. So a lot of different screens in here. Ten, and there's number one, two, three, uh -huh. We were on number five, I think, four. That's the one we were using. And I'm going to put it back on that one. Why not? All right, now let's take a look at the tethering app. This one has been designed to work with the app Smart Time, which here it is from the Google Play Store. I'm going to open it. First time loading, you get a picture subtly in the background. You get the main page information on here. The exercise page, it shows you what it's going to look like. A heart rate page, an overall sleep for the night before, and then a start button. We start it. It says welcome in here, lets you agree to some policies, and then it lets you register uh, by Google, Facebook, email, or phone, or go into a not logging mode, which is going to allow you to uh, get your data, but it's not going to record that or send it to the uh, cloud. You give it whatever nickname you want. I'm SWT for smartwatch ticks on all of these. And go next. You can choose, I typically choose female in case it has a uh, tracking for female cycle information. Uh, that's an easy way to look at it. Uh, what age do I want? Let's pick uh, that age, which would be 32. I'm gonna go imperial. I'm going to leave it on the default height and weight, which is in English. So if you have set it for metric, it'll be in metric. Uh, I usually go 8,000. And look, it's also showing you what the calories burned would be um, for that distance of walking and approximately how long, uh, what the distance would be in that too, equated to uh, mileage, I guess. Um, we apply the following permissions, so it's notifying you what permissions it needs to collect and why, which is nice. And then you just grant those permissions. Contacts if you want to, SMS if you want to, notifications, it takes you over there. You then have to turn all of that stuff on, which is way down here in... There it is, smart time. Yeah, I know, I got a ton of other apps in here and nobody has as much as I've got because I need them all for all the different watches. I've added a new app to the background and ignore optimizations and done. We're finally here. Then I got to come over here and add a new device, right? And it's got to search for this thing. 
Okay, I've decided to change phones on you because I took this out and gathered some data. It's all on this phone and not the other one. So I'm doing that connection here. Uh, same thing, just a different phone. And then we come up with this screen where we have a picture of what it should look like on the watch. And sure enough, it matches the picture on the watch. Hit the check mark. We are connecting. Bluetooth settings says power's on, visibility is off. So all you need is power on for it to work. Whoa, it's already that late. Well, <laughs> we're time flying while we're having fun, right? Okay, we're here. I've got uh, my profile. I've got device. We've got it connected and I've got data. Now I'm coming back here to show you the data that's on the watch and the latest stuff that it did today. I've got my activity. I've got my heart rate and I got my blood pressure, which I haven't taken on this thing. But what I want to show you is, um, oh yeah, and this is uh, sleep time from the night before. I want to show you that if I go into calendar, let's go back one month, display, and let's pick up that first day, the 23rd, because this stuff I want to show you. Here's the whole chart against the 10,000 step goal I had set at that time and heart rate monitor and so forth. And uh, then I got a little hiking thing going on right here. And it shows you the basic summary. And if you go into it, there you go. Now, what is this mess? It's a track of my house because I just turned it on and walked around in my neighborhood, but it's against the Google map. So if I zoom this out, you just see a little red spot uh, around the house. And this is actually the dimensions of the house right in here. Um, so it's calculating its data. You have your overall pace information, heart rate information during that time, and full listing of details. You'll get that on any of the other activities that you do on any of the dates that you record. Here's a, a bicycle example and so forth. You also have colored uh, charts that explain everything to you. And again, you've got all of these different categories available. So that's the information page and how you get to the other pages. Here's all of the stuff you can control on the watch remotely uh, from the app, including the uh, 24 hour heart rate monitor. You can set start and end times and it's basically set all night and monitoring intervals as low as every 15 minutes or every two hours depending on how much battery life you want to extend and so forth. Um, this is upgrading the GPS data to the watch so it links up quicker and is uh, highly accurate. And it looks like I have a firmware update waiting too. If you have a little red dot, you can update the firmware. Uh, that's pretty much it for the app. This is it for the watch. And now we're back live with the Bakey M5S. That was the uh, M5 you just saw. So again, the major differences with the new one, in addition to the compass working properly, is the ability to do Bluetooth calling as well as uh, SIM calling. You can put a SIM in it and a little bit of Bluetooth control here where you can uh, search and connect to other devices. So let's take a quick look at this. If I go into Dialer, for example, and I put in a number and I say dial, it comes up and you get to choose local or Bluetooth. If you choose local, you have a SIM card in it, it'll make the call using that SIM. If you say Bluetooth and you're tethered to your phone, your phone will light up and it'll make the call from your phone. That's the big difference and it's called dual mode. And when you see that kind of activity in a watch, you know that you have the option to do either one. So you could take this with you, with your phone in your pocket, and go out and about and answer and, uh, and, and talk to people right from uh, the watch on your arm. If you want to go jogging and leave your phone at home, that's fine. Forward the calls from your phone to the number in your watch, and now you can receive calls from people calling your phone or calling the number in your watch. You could have your work line in your watch and your personal line in your phone or vice versa. Lots of different capabilities that way. And once again, the very end, you can invoke uh, Siri or the Google Assistant, depending on which phone you have, and ask it to do whatever thing you want. Look things up, place phone calls for you, all of that stuff directly from the watch. So. How do you get it? 
Easy from Banggood. They've got a link in the show notes uh, here for you. Uh, look for a discount on that price. Uh, goes into flash sale sometimes, and when it's not in sale, I try to have a coupon to get you a good discount on it. It uh, really fits the bill now. It was an okay watch before, but now that they've really got the compass working and barometer and altimeter and all that stuff in the watch, you've got health with heart rate and blood pressure and those things continuous with charts, and you've got the, the dual uh, mode calling. Uh, it's really a decent uh, decent thing to keep on your arm for just about anything you need. Alrighty, gang, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.